NFL DFS video. Going to be breaking down the Thursday night showdown slate here between the Minnesota Vikings and the LA Rams. Let's go on and get into it. So let's start off with the game preview. And the first thing that's really shocking to me is really the game total. The game total is set at 48 points, which to me seems to be a little bit high. I, you know, like I know both offenses are pretty good. Uh, the Rams are getting back Cooper Cup, which is obviously a big elevation for them. But also they're going to be without Puka Nakua and Puka Nakua 2.0, Jordan Winnington. So on top of that as well, like this matchup for Kyron Williams is probably the most difficult one that he has faced thus far this season, especially in terms of getting his uh, rushing yards. Like, sure, he'll probably still score a touchdown, but a little bit concerning there. And I'm a little bit surprised that the Vikings are three-point favorites in this game, meaning I, I feel like they should be a little bit higher. And so I will be making my builds kind of based off of that, where the Vikings will be playing from behind, and maybe we get a little bit more of... Aaron Jones rushing the football, but I do think it's important to call it this is a short week for the Vikings as well. And the reason I bring that up is because Aaron Jones was banged up heading into their bye week, seemed healthy last week, but at the same time, it wouldn't be that shocking to see the Vikings maybe give Ty Chandler a little bit more work in this game as a result, especially if they are grinding out a win. And so I do want to look at the stats here for you guys, uh, snaps specifically. If TJ Hawkinson is back tonight, I don't know what the, the snap count allocation would be. I would expect him to kind of almost be a full goal, but maybe he'd just fall into like the Johnny Munn role in the first game where he's playing 50 to 60% of the snaps. We really don't have a good expectation for that. But what I really want to look at here is going to be the LA Rams receiver. So uh, looking at kind of the rotation that they're going to be running out, we did see this once before. And that was basically week one when Puka Nakua got injured. It was a lot of Cooper Cup, obviously. Then we saw Demarcus Robinson, who has held the same role uh, throughout this season. That's not going to change. But it was Tyler Johnson who actually saw uh, a big increase in his workload. And with Jordan Winnington still out, I think we can expect that. At the same time, it wouldn't be too surprising to see some touches go to Tutu Atwell. But with Cooper Cup back, I kind of expect it to be Demarcus Robinson, Tyler Johnson, and Cooper Cup. That was my expectation coming into the season as well, that Tutu Atwell would be more of a handcuff to Cooper Cup because, well, that's what we saw last year as well. So I will be making lineups based off of that. That's kind of also my long way of saying probably just not playing Tutu Atwell and Tyler Johnson together in a build, which I don't know if I exactly like just given the pricing that we have. So with that, let's go ahead and get into the slate. And let's start out with those LA Rams. And so I did mention like Tutu Atwell, we probably want to begin to him or Tyler Johnson. I do see this being more of a Tyler Johnson game, uh, especially just in the sense that he he has gotten targeted a decent amount in those two games that have been kind of Tyler Johnson games last week and then in week one. Now, it's a terrible sample size. I get that. But as price tag, I, I think we could actually play him in the flex, but I think we can play him in the captain spot as well. You guys will see that will open up a lot in your build process. Another play that I do like is Demarcus Robinson. Uh, if you look at kind of like his prize picks or underdog fantasy score prop line, um, it's like 6.5 on prize picks, which isn't high. And that kind of tells you the likelihood of him scoring a touchdown. But if we're playing him in the captain spot, that's really just what we're shooting for is for him to get kind of a lucky touchdown. Obviously, we're not banking on that. But if he does score a touchdown, and if this game is that high scoring that's projected to be, that does increase the likelihood of Demarcus Robinson scoring a touchdown. So although I don't love the idea of playing him in the captain spot, like in terms of the floor, I don't think his is all that high. But I do think he has probably the highest ceiling of kind of Tutu Atwell and Tyler Johnson. At least we can bank on him being on the field. Uh, from there, Kobe Parkinson is a little bit uh, too low price as well. I know he's he's been a little bit hit or miss in terms of his production. But again, given the pricing that we have on the slate, he is someone we can certainly get to. And that's kind of the annoying part about this slate is that we're going to be getting to a lot of LA Rams just given the fact that all their players are a little bit too cheap. Now, Kyron Williams, I do think we could potentially fade this game, which sounds crazy. If you guys have been following my channel or my picks, you know that I've been on Kyron Williams since last year, uh, maybe even a little bit before that as well when reports were coming out that had he not gotten injured his rookie year, he might have been the RP1 then. Uh, but Kyron Williams is someone that has greatly benefited from being able to score touchdowns. And this is a, a week in which I do think that this could be a little bit of tough sledding for him. And if we are playing all those pass catchers, I don't mind the idea of just banking on him not scoring a touchdown and maybe him just scoring 
seven points basically rushing the football like to me that seems like the best lineup path in terms of being a little bit different but also staying logical with your lineup approach so i like that cooper cup is going to be someone we're easily playing if you can fit him into the captain spot i would obviously do that he's I, to me, he's the best player in the slate tonight. And then, like, we can easily get to Matthew Stafford. Uh, you know, he's projected to get around 15 uh, for a fantasy score. And let's just take a peek at the 9-5 to five, uh, cheat sheet as well real quick for the Rams. And in terms of raw fantasy score, it does like... Oh, wrong, wrong slide. Sorry. <laughs> like, like, the, like the video, though, guys. That does help out the channel. Uh, here we go. In terms of raw fantasy score, it's going to be Kyron Williams, then Cooper Cup, then Matthew Stafford. Rams DST kind of popping up in there. I don't know if I exactly see it that way. And so with that, let's go ahead now and adjust into the Minnesota Vikings. And it does have TJ Hawkinson currently projected to get some points again. I I think TJ Hawkinson being healthy uh, would actually just help Sam Darnold out a lot, would increase Sam Darnold's likelihood of throwing an extra touchdown uh, because they are kind of missing a red zone threat. I think if you put TJ Hawkinson back in, that does help out him in the red zone uh aaron jones is an interesting play because game script wise you know looking at it he would make sense to be on as a play again if they're three point favorites if this game is going to be that high scoring there's a decent chance that he could be grinding out the win here for uh the minnesota vikings and he's a play that i like a decent amount that being said if we're making a lineup like this it's going to be more difficult to get to someone like justin jefferson now obviously in a lineup like this we could easily just sub in justin jefferson right there and we're feeling pretty good about it uh do i like the idea of fading sam darnold no uh, but let's talk about just the Minnesota plays in general. Again, given the value that we have on the slate, I think we are going to be rolling with the Rams a little bit more. But obviously, we want to be on Justin Jefferson. Just been an extremely consistent pass catcher. Uh, really looking like the best receiver in the league thus far this season and obviously last season as well. Jordan Addison has been pretty good. Um, and he looks healthier and healthier each game. A uh, little bit of a touchdown upside play. And so for me, he's almost more of a a captain kind of only play just in the sense that given his price that we're getting on the slate it does feel like he needs to score a touchdown to really pay off and if he scores a touchdown obviously then we would just rather have him in our captain spot i'm a little bit surprised by the pricing for Jalen naylor uh his role has definitely stayed there uh and they're running out a, a lot of 11 personnel oh and look at that tj hawkinson is ruled out okay so that does increase Jalen naylor's likely to be a decent play on this slate but i don't think we need to go crazy with that um let's see here so aaron jones we want to be on sam darnold i'm fine with again with tj hogginson being out i i don't like sam darnold as much of a play now johnny munn's okay then josh oliver's probably the best value now on the slate in terms of cheapest play that can give you like a point i wouldn't bank on that like johnny munn's definitely more the pass catcher but it wouldn't be surprising to see that happen but i think we're really just looking at kind of these three but again with hawkinson out i do think that hurts darnold a little bit so like Looking at it, guys, we'll go Cup, Stafford, just because if we are loading up on all those uh, LA Rams plays, that's I think we want to do that. We'll put Tyler Johnson in the captain spot. Then we have 2.2 left over. I would have loved to have gotten to Demarcus Robinson. Oh, we can. We can get to Demarcus Robinson. I misclicked and had uh, Boogie Nagu in there. So like, I feel like this is a solid kind of safe build, um, and which is weird to say without having Kyron in there. But you guys get the lineup approach here. Like, obviously, I mentioned Demarcus Robinson probably has a higher upside, a higher ceiling. But let's go ahead and look at the 9-to-5 lineup builder, see if that's kind of spitting out the same stuff as well. And so, again, to get the 9-to-5 lineup builder to start, you just need to give it two data points to go off of. So for the sake of this video, I'm just going to round up on the two highest priced plays. And just to give you guys an idea of what the lineup builder, what the data is telling us to do as well in terms of the lineup process. And so <laughs> I'm not putting Rams DST in the captain spot. Um, I'm not doing that. <laughs> So it does like Rams DST a decent amount. Um, I'm actually going to, let's take D DSTs out real quick. So I'm going to, I'm just going to limit them. So I don't want to play the DSTs in the captain spot. Sure. If they score a touchdown, whatever. Uh, and really lineup wise, flex wise, let's just do 20%. I don't, and for the sake of this video, let's do five. I don't really want them to be showing up that much. Uh, because again, I think it will be higher scoring. I'm, I'm kind of just saying day's wrong there. And so from there, we have our two builds with the DSTs right here. And then we get more into this build right here. Sam Darnold, Aaron Jones, Brandon Powell. Uh, I get it. Why it's popping up in there so you can fit in Jefferson and Tutu or Stafford and Tutu Atwell. Again, guys, I might create a rule where like when a lineup includes Tutu Atwell or even this, I'll probably do at most one of Tutu Atwell, Captain, Tutu Atwell, Flux, and then Tyler Johnson, Captain, Tyler Johnson, Flux. And that that's again... 
just because I see those two not coexisting together on the slate. And so I want to be on one or the other. And again, I favor Tyler Johnson a little bit more, but if you're liking Tutu Atwell, I don't really blame you. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. If you guys want access to the NFL DFS lineup optimizer or the NFL uh, DFS tools, head on over to 95sports.com, get access to those for just $10 a month. When you use the promo code Keep Cash, you can get 20% off your first 9 to 5 membership. Turn that $10 membership into $8 for the first month. Take advantage of that, guys. Uh, make sure to leave a like on this video. That does help out a lot. Thank you guys for watching. Good luck. And as always, let's keep cashing.